The Sunday school lesson for August the 4th, 2024 is Hope in Christian Fellowship. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 20, and chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Welcome, viewers and subscribers, to my channel, The Backstory and More. I am Audrey. If you are new here, please notice the agenda. First of all, I will share the backstory, read the lesson text, and offer a brief lesson summary. In order for the YouTube algorithm to continue to push out my video in a relevant fashion, please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your Bible study class, your Sunday school class, your Facebook friends, your Instagram friends, and others. Thank you so much for helping me to walk in my path. The backstory, let's begin. Because it was written around AD 51, the epistle we call 1 Thessalonians was probably the first of the New Testament's 27 books to be written. Although the four gospels detail earlier events, most research agrees that those four were not written until the AD 60s and later. Thessalonica was and is a Macedonian port city where Paul founded a church during his second missionary journey. His visit was quite controversial, Acts chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. The commotion Paul stirred was so intense that he had to escape by night, chapter 17, verse 10. That was not the first time he had to do so, chapter 9, verses 23 through 25 nor would it be the last time. Chapter 23, verse 31. The city was on an important trade route and prospered as a result. Those of Greek, Roman, and Jewish heritage constituted its population. Paul and Silas had entered the synagogue in Thessalonica and argued from the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah. They ultimately persuaded some Jews and many Gentiles, Acts chapter 17, verses 1 through 4. Other Jews in the city became envious of Paul and Silas's success. They persuaded the governing authorities to persecute the residents who believed in Christ. While the church in Thessalonica grew, it continued to face challenges in the form of persecution. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14, and chapter 3, verses 3 through 4. Paul wrote this letter to comfort and encourage the Thessalonian believers in their trials. For the present, it instructs us on growing in godliness and maturing in faith amid life's circumstances. For the future, its message provides eternal hope and assurance that all believers will experience God's presence when Christ returns. Finally, it serves as an example of how Christian fellowship can be maintained to strengthen and encourage other believers during seasons of separation. Verse 13, And we also thank God continually, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you, who believe. Verses 14 through 16. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own people the same things those churches suffered from the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displease God and are hostile to everyone in their effort to keep us from speaking 
to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. In this way, they always heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. Verses 17 through 18. But, brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time, in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. For we wanted to come to you, certainly I, Paul, did, again and again. But Satan blocked our way. Verses 19 through 20. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. Verses 4 through 5. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted, and it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. A very brief summary. The credibility of Paul led the Thessalonians to accept his message as the word of God rather than just another religious teaching. As a result, they had been able to withstand persecution. The turmoil stirred by the Jews in Thessalonica caused Paul to flee and eventually take an unplanned trip to Athens. Paul confessed that his trouble caused doubt to arise in him. Would Satan's influence keep the infant church from thriving, causing Paul to have labored in vain? To ease those doubts, Timothy was sent from Athens to follow up. Suffering is part of the Christian life, but sometimes we fall into the habit of dealing with suffering alone. We think we need to just grit our teeth and bear it. While God does not call us to endure suffering, he does not ask us to suffer alone. Paul talks more about suffering for Christ than anyone else in the New Testament. Yet his solution was not telling people to buck up, but encouraging them. Because the church is Christ's body, we share in each other's sufferings. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. By encouraging one another, we can help bear the burdens of our brothers and sisters in Christ, Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. We will also keep sufferings from becoming temptations, leading one another away from following Christ. Thank you so very much for watching. Join me soon for the next backstory and more. And remember, every Sunday at 1 o'clock Central Standard Time, I release a video for the upcoming Sunday School lesson. Thank you so much for all that you do to help me walk in my purpose. Stay safe and may God bless.